I set about finding out just how many workloads I could run on one of today's modern mini PCs, especially those with DDR5 memory that can be upgraded to 96 gigs of memory. How many VMs can you run on this setup? 50, 100, 150, or maybe more? Well, that is what we're going to find out, so stick around. Today's mini PCs are making great home lab platforms for many that are looking to run a home lab with a few virtual machines and containers. However, can these little mini PCs run in the neighborhood of the workloads that can be run on an enterprise server? Well, I wanted to find out just what kind of density that you could actually achieve with a mini PC. And I'm talking about a single mini PC, not a cluster of mini PCs. So the mini PC that I'm using for this test is the Geekum AE7, which I recently reviewed. And it's equipped with the Ryzen 9 7940 HS processor and a whopping 96 gigs of DDR5 RAM that I was able to purchase during the recent Prime Day sale. And that's two 48 gigabyte modules. It is a compact little mini PC that I thought would make a great test bed for seeing how many virtual machines I could actually pack into this little package. I installed a Samsung Evo 980 Pro 2 terabyte NVMe drive for housing the workloads. And then also Proxmox VE 8.2 is our virtualization platform of choice for this experiment. And of course, the 96 gigs of memory that I recently installed. Before we started cloning up virtual machines, I created the virtual machine template that would be used for the test. My base VM is an Ubuntu Server 2204 installation, and it's configured with two gigs of RAM and two vCPUs. Now, you may be saying, why two gigs of memory as I could have achieved more density cutting that in half? Well, I wanted to have something that I would install in the home lab. A lot of Linux VMs that I spin up are between two and four gigs of memory, as I find that one gig is a bit anemic for most things that I want to do. So I settled on two gigs for this test in the home lab. I updated the system and installed Docker just in case I wanted to play around with some containers later on. And I also installed the Linux stress utility along with the STUI user interface, which is a great utility for running the stress utility with a nice GUI. To kick things off, I decided to start with a modest number of virtual machines. So I started with 50 virtual machines. Using the bulk start operation in Proxmox, I powered them all up without a hitch. The system handled 50 VMs without any problem. So I decided to start pushing the envelope. Next, I ramped up to 80 virtual machines, still breathing room. Then we took it up to 100, 115, and then eventually 125 VMs. Surprisingly, the RAM usage was still under control, hovering around 78%, even with the 125 VMs running. And you may ask, how is this type of overcommit with Proxmox memory possible? Well, like most modern hypervisors, Proxmox has a lot of tricks up its sleeves for handling memory overcommit, including ballooning and other techniques. There's also another really neat memory management tool that is available in Proxmox. It's called Dynamic Memory Management. And this says something really cool. If you have virtual machines running on your Proxmox hosts that are of the same OS, and that is the case in my configuration, using at least 80% of your physical memory on the host, it says wait a few minutes and this KSM process or kernel same page merging is a feature that scans the memory of all the virtual machines running on a single host looking for duplication and consolidating. If, Especially if you're in the same case that I am cloning identical virtual machines with the same amount of memory, there is obviously going to be room for deduplication and consolidating. So with this KSM process, according to this official documentation from Proxmox, it's able to improve virtual machine density by as much as 300% without impacting performance. And I certainly noticed that. I could wait just a little bit when the memory would peak up into the 90 something percent range. After a few minutes, the memory pressure would back down to 
let's say 78%. So I was able to see this KSM process as part of dynamic memory management in operation. Results were significant, especially for density running the same types of operating systems. So it allows this level of overcommit to be possible with running this number of virtual machines. With Proxmox efficient memory management, we went even further. I went up to 140, 150, and then 180 virtual machines. At this point, the memory usage peaked at 93%, but the system was still stable. Now for the grand finale. I wanted to see if I could go for 200 virtual machines and then 250. Was that even possible? Guys, I want to show you this. This is so cool. And I think it's just a testament to what you can do with modern mini PC hardware as well as something like Proxmox. So I made it all the way to 200 virtual machines running inside of Proxmox VE. When I push the memory up and it gets up to like 93% memory, you know, I think, okay, I'm done. There's no headroom left on the box. But if I let the box sit for a while, the memory actually compresses down. As you guys can see, as we've just been sitting here talking, the memory usage is going down 200 virtual machines on 96 gigs of memory. And I think we've still got a headroom. And so I want to continue to push this box higher and higher. Let's see if we can actually crash the box, if that's possible. So I'm going to continue to clone. So that is another 10 virtual machines and it's laboring a bit to clone these virtual machines out. I know we are seeing some IO contention as every clone process. I see the IO delay that is jumping up almost 100%. Then it'll bounce back down as it finishes virtual machines. But amazingly, the memory is going down. Now, once we power the new virtual machines back on, we're going to be able to push this back up. But amazingly, again, it's just seems to be hovering around that 78 to 82 percent mark that kernel same page merging is running and it's deduplicating that memory and that's why we were seeing that memory usage actually dropping with this number of virtual machines let's see if our clone process has finished it has so let's see if we can get these additional 10 virtual machines up and running which with the memory drained back down i think it's going to happen. So let's just start these puppies up, see what happens, and see how long it takes it to spin these up. Okay, guys, as you can see, 210 virtual machines running on this mini PC with the AMD Ryzen 9 7840 HS processor, 96 gigs of memory, and those last 10 virtual machines was able to push it up to 88.85% memory. And I want to show you guys just so you can see these VMs are responsive. I can log into the virtual machines. I can, just to show you guys this, I can actually initiate a stress test. So we're going to let that one fire up. I'm just randomly picking virtual machines, but I, I just want you guys to see that we are not just simply spinning up virtual machines that basically you can't do anything with. These are virtual machines that are responsive. They are able to run workloads. They are able to do anything you want. So, I mean, this is amazing to me uh, with this experiment. 89% memory. So I think we've got a lot of headroom here. Let's just keep going for the moon here. Um, and I am wondering, can we possibly get to 250 virtual machines? I really wonder. I am very optimistic, honestly. So let's keep going.
Oh my goodness, it made it 250 virtual machines. And the box still looks to be handling it 99% memory. All right, let's see if we've got responsive virtual machines. Right, let's go to console. Let's see what happens here. All right, so far so good. Let's see if we can add to its stress. No fear. 98% memory, as you guys can see, I'm launching some stress utilities, opening the console. Let's log in. All right, let's get a couple of stresses going. As you guys can see, that we're, we're not taking it easy on this box. 99% memory, we got 62% CPU. This is incredible, it really is. I never expected to be able to get to this point in, in a stable way. Hey, okay, let's, we've got three VMs that are running a stress utility on top of the fact that we have got 250 virtual machines, guys. This is amazing. Finally, on hitting the 250 VM mark, I pushed the CPU to 94% and the RAM usage to 99%. Even with this massive load, the system remained stable all in. One thing I did notice was that random virtual machines were powered off during this last batch, totaling around five VMs each time. And I could power these back on, but another batch of around five would be powered off. So I think I hit a limit in Proxmox where it started to decide which virtual machines and which resources that it needed to power down to reclaim memory for the system itself. There are virtual machines that I'm noticing that are getting powered off. Uh, so I can go through and I can say restart, restart, or not restart. I can go through and I can say start, but it's it's only a few. It's We're talking three, four virtual machines. So as I'm buzzing through, there's one that is powered off. So I think what Proxmox may be doing just to give the hypervisor a little bit of breathing room to do what it needs to do. So you can see here, guys, swap usage, 100%, CPU usage, basically 100%, RAM usage, 100%. And we have essentially a stable server. Incredible. Now, I know I'm going to have some haters in the comments on this video that will say that the virtual machines, for the most part, were not doing anything and this isn't a scientific test, and they would be correct. However, that was my intention. And why do I say that? Well, most home labs contain workloads that are basically sitting in an idle condition, meaning they aren't doing any work in the home lab. However, I wanted to simulate the need to spin up dozens or even hundreds of VMs for different types of labs or scenarios that you want to play around with in the home lab, and absolutely, a mini PC can do this with that many workloads. And it's incredible to me to see that in 2024, we have modern mini PCs and hardware that can handle such a massive number of virtual machines. So if you are wondering if a mini PC can replace your larger home lab servers that may be pulling 1,000 watts in your server rack, the answer is a resounding yes. Most likely, it can. Well, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful or interesting, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more awesome content from Virtualization How To. Well, stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you guys in the next video.